All right, getting us started. This is the new Strike King Gravel Dog. Isn't that pretty? A 10 foot diving bait comes in two different sizes. That one's called Bone Crawl, which is absolutely my favorite color. Great new finishes, a neat new bait, an eight foot diver and a 10 foot diver. That one just got introduced to it. Stay with us here on Martin and Best Bass TV for some crank and fall action. It's that time once again. Welcome back to another season of Mark Menendez Bass TV. This week, Mark has got a new dog on a fluorocarbon leash. He's at Lake X with a brand new Strike King Gravel Dog. When we say it's brand new, he's only got two of them to use. One great thing about being a Strike King pro is getting to use new baits before they hit the store shelves. A new crankbait from Strike King. It's been a while since we've had a new bait. I guess the last true crankbait that we made was a, in the XD series, I guess, you know, we've had versions of this and versions of that, but uh, a true new crankbait. It's a bait that is a 10 foot diver. You can look at it on forward facing and get straight down to 10 feet. I love this rounded bill. Anytime I've got a bill the same shape as my thumb means it's going to deflect off of cover, rocks, brush, whatever, grass. It's got a good side to side action. It's a great size and it throws great. Um, two different sizes, an eight foot diver and a 10 foot diver. This is the 10 foot diver that I have right here. And I think it's going to be that pre-spawn crankbait. Um, that February, March, April, good wide wobble to it. Good hard signature thump. It's not, it's, it's not a slow lazy, but it's just got a good hard thump to it to call those fish in that cooler water. And then because I can control it so well, 10 foot diving on 10 or 12 pound test line, I think it'll be a real good bait um, as those fish start moving back out to the structure. At, on, as a post spawn bait, that first, those first little moves, they move out to a gravel bar or uh, a point or a corner of a channel swing in that 10 foot zone will be perfect. Oh, that was a good one. I thought it was the way it just loaded. It didn't even, it just stopped. Come on, get down. Is a gravel eater right there. Stay hooked up. Got here off this bank here and let him swim a little bit. I think I've got him pretty well hooked. God, I just can't where he nipped it because he got it right in the corner of his mouth. Come here. Come here. A little too hard. No, don't do it, don't do it. I just got one hook in him. You can't hardly get out of the water. It's such a good fish. There's a gravel dog. How about that? Look at that, he just eased over and nipped it. Put a number three Gamakatsu hook on there and got him. How about that? a little better in that old tough corner. There we go. That's a good one. All right, one, two, and three. Rain coming. Rain coming again. Get some intermittent showers here. We're gonna get wet on this one. I can hear it coming through the tree. 
that one. Just wound it through there and went. It didn't take long for the gravel dog to hunt up a bass or two. Other than a small weather delay due to some rain, the bite has been quick. Mark continues to parallel the rip wrap, keeping the bait in the strike zone for the maximum amount of time. As you can see, we have different outer gear on now. The rain shower just blew through here. Made a stop for a minute. And it's kind of brisk right now, so I'm gonna leave this jacket on for a few minutes. Hopefully we're done with a little bit of rain, but we had the absolute perfect fishing day. Low, overcast, little wind, fronts moving through, should have them fired up. These kind of days just don't come along every day. Because once this blows through tomorrow, fishing will be tough, high and blue. Wind will shift out of the north or behind this and it'll be hard to get a bite, but we're gonna take advantage of it today. There's one, there's one. Oh boy, I can't tell. That one hit it deep. Oh, look at that big white belly there. Look at that white belly. He just sat down there and shook his old big heads what he did when I hooked him. But he's got it swallowed. Yeah, I can get off the bank here for ways. Boy, I mean, he's got it. Old rod just loaded up. He has got it quit. You're caught. You are caught, brother. You're caught. I gotta get him any way I can get him. There we go. Look at that one. Look at that. He just got it by the head of the bait there. Uh huh. Like it. Old jacket and fighting jacket. I'm gonna have to get some supply. Oh. Good one right there. I mean, how many times does it happen when that bait is bouncing off the bottom and it skips funny and then you get let one loads up on it? That's exactly what the dog was doing down there. It was bouncing on that bottom and all of a sudden it skipped one time out to the side and he got hit. That's what I got. That's what we call. But that's so important with a crankbait, having that bouncing, deflecting off the bottom. Like I said, that one, the bank just kind of kicked out the side. As soon as it kicked out the side, it locked up. Bass are notorious for following the plug. They'll see it, it's bouncing on the bottom, then it does something crazy. That's when they get it. That's that deflection bite that you have to have with a crankbait, and this gravel dog has it. Just like that one. small fish, that fish was out there way deep, way deep. But they are getting this bait. They're coming down on top of it. And they are getting it. That one hit out there in that 10 foot range. And when it hit the, when it hit the bottom, it hit the bottom and just ticked it one time, loaded up on it. tips just clicking off those rocks are just it's just clicking off those rocks still bouncing off of rocks I'm sitting in about eight and a half feet of water here and it's coming right down the angle of the dam there in that six to eight zone and it's just deflecting that is what I want it to do you've got the best scenario going on here it's making it difficult for me to fish so well, that's why I rolled that motor around where I'm, it helps me. But I've got the wind coming across the lake and hitting this at the hardest point. It's keeping everything churned up. It's causing a little bit of, of, uh, of the silt in the water to, to get a little murkier. You've got more oxygen here and then you've got the bait fish that are being pushed over here. 
This is a triple advantage point for a bass. He's got everything he needs. He's up here shallow. He's aggressive and ready to eat because of the low light. And then with the wind blowing on it, that's a double whammy as far as productivity in your fishing. In the fall, particularly, the wind really, really becomes what I've said many times on the show, your friend. It makes fish more active. With no shortage of strikes, Mark can't be anything but pleased about the performance of the gravel dog. He's had an above average day for late fall, not just in numbers, but size as well. He figured out a true pattern, but the sun is starting to peek through the clouds. A change in color may be all he needs to keep the bass biting. <laughs> it's every throw. This one's just, he's going out there at offshore, but I don't know what, I'm not gonna call this one just yet until he comes up here and shows himself. This might be a good fish. It is. I believe it is. Still haven't seen this fish. I got him hooked right in the top of the nose. Now he's really gonna fight. I'm just kind of hanging on here. When you get him up there on top like that, you, oh no. Oh no. Not good. Well, we'll throw a red one for a while then. Yeah, that was the prototype color on that one too. It's the only one of those I've got, so we're gonna have to throw another color. We'll just go with this fire crawl now. Oh my goodness, that breaks my heart. No idea what's going on here yet. Well, obviously it just needs to be a brighter color. It doesn't matter what color it is as long as it's bright. See, that one hit it by the side. This is fire craw and he drilled it just as good as they were drilling the other one. Well, that dispels the myth that red's only good in the spring. More little ones out here. There's fish busted on the other side of it. You know, we're headed towards winter and fish tend to, tend to really get grouped up. And one of the things they do is they get grouped up according to size. And that's because of athletic ability. That size fish, a 12 inch fish can cruise down the bank at the same size as other 12 inch fish. He can't keep up with a four or five pound fish as well. So here's another fish on, and it feels like another one the exact same size, and it is. So we've got a group of fish on this corner of this point, and they're all the same darn size, just little old bitty guys. But that's what happens when you find them grouped up. You'll find, four pounders with four pounders and three pounders with three pounders. You generally don't find a mixing of those fish except in the early spring or actually in the, in the post spawn period when those first fish start moving offshore, then they'll get a little bit mixed up. That's according to size. But there's a ton of fish right here on the corner of this thing. And it's hard to fish in the wind. Hard to make that cast, hard to make that presentation, hard for boat control. But it just makes the fish more active. Simple as that. Better fish, maybe? Boy, I mean, he drilled it. A little bit better. He just absolutely, come on up here. You see how he went hit it sideways right there? He got it straight across his face. Seems that fish came from some distance to get that bait. That one straight got him. It's a little thick little old fish, a little chunk. I like those kind. Get out of here, buddy. He just straight drilled that 
fire crawl. This has quickly become one of my favorite colors on Kentucky Lake. Those darn smallmouth really don't like it in the springtime, but they really do like it. And these fish are getting it pretty good too. Puller, mess with you. I believe there's some more right there. They are really honed in on it. This one's got it good as well. They're all getting it really good. I'm wondering how much of that is the bait or how much of that is just we have such a good day. We're on a, a really good day. That's a fat little fella right there too. As the day winds down, Mark keeps winding. As an angler, when you can keep one bait in your hand and continue to get quality bites, that's a success. Whether it's tournament fishing at the highest level or just having fun, that's what you strive for as an angler. Hello. He decided he was going to get a little bigger, I believe. Still haven't decided what I've got here soft rod you really don't know until you get them up here close. Good fish got to be on the side of his face, that's what it is. Gonna nip it and turn that other hook got him. That chub. Ah, that is a fat little old bass. I am digging this plug. This is going to be a Kentucky Lake getter. Especially this one in the springtime. But we'll make it work today as well. Look at that guy. That's a chunk. Chubby little old fish. Get out of here. All right, next. Next, please. You know, the, the gravel dog fills a perfect size niche in the line of crankbaits. It's not an overly large crankbait, yet it gets down to that 10 foot zone. There's an eight foot diver and a 10 foot diver. The shape of that bill allows it to deflect really well. It's a good size bait, but yet it's diminutive enough that smaller fish or smallmouth and spotted bass can get after it as well. But I think its best attribute is the vibration. This is one that is going to be a fantastic pre-spawn bait on rocky lakes. It's going to be a bait that up in the summer, if your tournament um, circuit goes to a river system, you're going to be able to fish it off of wing dams and any kind of riprap and rock. Um, I think it's going to be really versatile. And with the fact that we have two different sizes, makes it even that much better. That little guy came off. The eight foot diver and the 10 foot diver give you some options. Well, if, if you can see, we're at the front is just about through here. And before it ends, before this, before this pushes on through, I'm gonna get back on that verticality of that riprap those fish had pushed way up there, the lake flattens out right over here. I'm gonna go back and go through that again just to see if I can get another good bite or two. Because I've hit some of the best cover out here in five to seven to eight and I have not gotten a bite. So the wind is a big factor pushing that way. The light has been low all day and we're about to lose this low light I'm gonna ease back through here one more time and blow through here one more time. If I can get another bite or two. See? Partly cloudy now where it was good and overcast this morning. There's a good one right there. That feels like a good, awful good one. Hopefully it is. Nice bass. See how white that fish is? He came out here a little bit deeper. A little bit deeper. Big headed fish. 
fish there. Pliers go. When you're catching them on a plug, you gotta have pliers handy. White that fish is, it's another fish out there deep. I tell you what, this gravel dog has certainly got a place in my tackle box. Man, that little yellow fish, he matches up with that plug pretty good. Y'all come back for another episode of Mark Menendez Bass TV. We'll show you some techniques so you can catch some fish as well. See you next time. Little yellow dog right there, not a gravel dog, a yellow dog. Mark Menendez Bass TV is brought to you by Skeeter Boats, Seagull, Blues, Feel the Difference, Strike King Lure Company, Power Pole, Closed Captioning provided by Dying to Fish.